Hello everyone, I once again welcome you to my series of lecture that is understanding pharmaceutical science with Dr. Hariharan. So, today we are going to discuss about the forward and reverse mutation elaborately. That is one of the type of mutation we called as the effect of mutation. Based on the effect of mutation we can classify into different types. So, we will elaborately discuss on this aspect today. right? So, first we understand little bit about mutation. So, I have already told in my previous lecture. So, mutation is a Latin term we called as muter. So, in English it means to change. That, uh, that means we, we tell mutation is an initially it was initially characterized that a change in the physical structure. So, if uh, any hair color changes or any changes in the eye color or any protein changes in the surface of the cell or it may be any mutation occurs in a bacterial cell anything if it is any physical structure changes we generally regard as a mutation. So, once our knowledge of this genetic increase we identify that the change in this characteristics is because of the protein and the protein is generally coded by the genetic sequence. So, the change in the genetic sequence is responsible for the change in the phenotype that means the change in genotype causes the change in phenotype. So, thereafter we identified uh, mutation is nothing but the change in the nucleotide sequence that is altered in the genetic sequence can lead to mutation. So, we can classify mutation into different types based on how it occurs or effect of mutation or change in the protein sequence like that. So, one of the classification is the based on the effect of mutation. What is the end product of the mutation? Based on it we can classify into three major types. One is the forward mutation, two is the reversion mutation which can be further classified into a true reversion and an equivalent reversion. And the third one is called a suppressor mutation. So, this is more or less a reversion mutation. So, we will discuss elaborately each types and its mechanism separately. First, we have a little understanding about the effects of mutation. So, if you see the effects of mutation, generally the mutation effects can be viewed by its change in the protein structure. So, generally we can classify the nucleotide sequence into two types. One we called as an intron sequence and second is an exon sequence. So, the intron sequence are called as the non-coding sequence. If any mutation occurs, it is not going to get featured because it is not going to produce any functional protein. So, it is not visible, any phenotypic changes will occur. And the second one is the exon sequence which is the protein coding sequence. So, if a changes occurs in this coding one that is the nucleotide sequence alters, what happens the protein sequence also be altered. If the protein sequence is altered, the characteristics that is the triad also will be changed. So, we can readily view one change in the phenotype. So, the impact of these changes of this nucleotide sequence or the protein level can be easily noticed with the change in the phenotype. So, that is why if you want to understand little bit in depth about the relationship between a nucleotide and a protein, what happen is that the nucleotides generally will be in triplet codon. That means, a three nucleotide together will code a particular amino acid. So, this process of conversion of a DNA to a protein we called as a translation and every triplet codon will code particular amino acids. There are 20 amino acids are there and there are 4 nucleotides are there. So, what happened is this, this 4 nucleotides on permutation and combination it has been identified as triplet codon and this triplet codon uh, will produce there are 64 types of triplet codon are available and based on this 20 amino acids will be produced. That means, a 3 triplet codon can code a same amino acid. So, that we will discuss elaborately in my future lectures. So, if you see that mutation, once we talk about the effect of mutation, we can classify the strains or the cells into two types. One is a wild type and second is the mutant type. So, wild type means in general it is the most prevalent form occurs in nature, 
it carries a particular genotype so that particular genotype is associated with a particular phenotype and it is naturally occurring so naturally occurring genes and its phenotype we call as wild type if any alteration occurs in that gene because of the phenotype will change then we call as a mutant type so this can occurs because by the this is the changes will occur these changes occurs by different types so one is the forward mutation so in this forward mutation what happen is that a wild type will be converted into a mutant form by an alteration in a gene structure through a point mutation so this uh, how the point mutation occurs we can elaborately discuss in my next lecture so what happens a particular sequence of dna and alteration occurs at any point from there the sequence gets altered and the protein amino acids will change so if you see a normal amino acid sequence that is atg codes for methionine and acc309 like that triple l isine and triple g glycine if any alteration happens in the sequence what happens the triplet codon will change the triplet codon changes then the amino acid sequence also changes so this is called as the forward mutation and the second type is called the reversion mutation so reversion mutation is nothing but the forward mutation is reversed back to the wild type that means a forward mutation occurs in a wild type produces a mutant type and a second mutation occurs in the same location of the mutant type what it will do it can reverse back to the wild type so this type of mutation we call as a reversion mutation so initially it was identified like that later on it was also identified this this reversion is not occurring at the same location it can occur at this other location also change to another mutant type so that's uh, reversion mutation has been told to occur so there are two types of reversion mutation are possible one is called true reversion and second is the equivalent reversion so i told there are possibilities at the same mutation can lead back either to a wild type or to an another mutant type so based on this we have classified into a true reversion and an equivalent reversion so first we will understand about true reversion so in true reversion what happen is that the forward mutation at the same location the second mutation occurs and now the mutant sequence get back to the wild type sequence this is called as true mutation or true reversion so this i have shown in the figure if you see the methionine threonine and serine and a forward mutation occurs at a particular location that is acc codes the threonine the triplet codon so instead of adenine the mutation has occurred at the cytosine so adenine gets converted to cytosine so the triple c codes another amino acid called as proline so the reverse mutation occurs at the same location the cytosine is converted to adenine so it restores the proline to threonine so this type we called as a true reversion so another example in an another location if you see tcc codes the serine and a forward mutation a cytosine is converted to guanine that becomes tgc becomes cysteine and a reverse occurs and back to serine so this is called as true reversion and the second type we called as an equivalent reversion so equivalent reversion means a wild type converted to a mutant type and a second mutation occurs in the same location and produces an other triplet codon which produces a similar type of amino acids that we called as an equivalent reversion so you can see from this picture that the methionine threonine and serine so the threonine codes acc this is an polar amino acid so in a forward mutation this acc converted to adenine converted to cytosine so ccc forms proline proline is a non polar amino acid so a second mutation that is the reversion occurs so the adjacent nucleotide instead of the cytosine coming back to adenine the next nucleotide the cytosine is converted to thymine 
it can leads to CTC which codes leucine. So the leucine is also a polar amino acid that means it has the same characteristics of 309. So 309 and leucine both are polar amino acid have the same characteristics. So what happened? It produces the same similar characteristics of the oil type but not the actual amino acid is there. So this is called a pseudo oil type. So the eucolant reversion can lead to pseudo oil type. And the third one is the suppressor mutation. So suppressor mutation is a part of the reversion mutation but we will deal it separately because the second mutation not occurring at the same location that is the original mutation location. It occurs at a different location of the original mutation but it suppresses the mutation for that process. So it is called as a suppressor mutation. So the suppressor mutation can occur at two location. One, it can occur within the same gene, then it is called as intragenic suppressor mutation or it occurs in a different gene we call as extragenic suppressor mutation. So in this picture if you see the suppressor mutation we have a sequence that is methionine, threonine, serine, proline, lysine and glycine. A forward mutation occurs by means of an addition. So if you see between serine and proline the 4C will be there and additional guanine will get inserted. So the TCC code serine and the additional guanine will start changing the next triplet codon. So instead of CCG proline it codes it has an additional nucleotide G. So the GCC codes alanine and GAA glucine and AGG that is arginine. So the sequence has changed. So what happens in this reversion the suppressor mutation what it will do is it deletes a particular amino acid that is the it deletes the guanine if it deletes it becomes a true reversion. Instead of guanine what it has done is it has deleted the another nucleotide that is a cytosine that is thymine which is near to the cytosine. So the serine TCC has been changed to CCC. So it codes proline. So whereas the next sequence if you see what happen is that the original one is maintained. So this is called a suppressor mutation. So I have told it has two types one is intragenic suppressor and second is extragenic suppressor. This extragenic suppressor can be further classified into two types if you see one is called nonsense suppressor and second is the physiological suppressor. So if you see the nonsense suppressor what happens why we called as nonsense if the mutation occurs in that uh, second time in the same location it is not going to change the amino acid sequence. So I have already told that the same amino acid can be coded by three different types of triplet codon. For example, consider a gene which codes a tyrosine tRNA, right? A tRNA will be there and an amino acyl group that is the tyrosine will be gets attached. So the attachment of this tyrosine to this tRNA depends upon the anticodon region which is present at the bottom. This anticodon only enables to recognize that particular amino acid and gets attached to the tRNA. So if this anticodon which uh, attaches tyrosine gets mutated and the mutated form also called as a different uh, uh, triplet codon which codes the same tyrosine attachment of the tyrosine for example UAG it inserts tyrosine. So it does not affect the translation process. This is called as nonsense suppressor. And second is the physiological suppressor. So this physiological suppressor how it will work? Because of the first mutation the chemical pathway has been stopped by a chemical pathway and the second mutation can cause us an alternate pathway of the same uh, chemical. So this can suppress the mutation which is occurred by the first mutation. For example, if you see a chemical pathway, so one particular substrate forming a particular product, it needs certain amino enzymes. So enzymes is nothing but the proteins. So if a mutation occurs and a particular protein is not formed, what happened? This biochemical pathway gets stopped. So what you will do is an another mutation happens. What happened? The substrate will take an alternate pathway 
and it produces the particular product. So this suppresses the mutation without affecting the physiological activity. So that's why we call it as a physiological mutation or physiological suppressor mutation. So thank you very much for understanding about this uh, different types of mutation, effects of mutation. So in my future lectures, you can understand about the uh, various type of point mutation, especially the mutation occurring in the protein structure. So thank you very much.